In the event of a trial, in the event of a problem, in the event of a catastrophe, if we can stop and focus on reconnecting with the Lord, no matter what, that will produce an ability to get through the circumstance. And then it says that patience will produce, will perfect us and make us perfect and complete and lacking in nothing. Now obviously, patience is just a word. Jesus will make us perfect and complete and lacking in nothing. And what I find so interesting is that the immediately James uses this, this, this point to launch into seeking wisdom. Seeking spiritual wisdom, which goes all the way back to the Proverbs, where the first proverb says that the the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all knowledge, and uh, that we should seek wisdom because wisdom's worth more than than all the riches in the world. And the concept of wisdom in the Proverbs is the truth that is the Word of God. And we find out in John verse 1 that the Word of God is actually Jesus Himself. And that, that a wise man walks with Jesus no matter what's happening. So it sort of, it sounds the same thing saying, count it all joy when bad things happen in your life because what's going to come of it is going to be good. Now, this is, this is where I have my problem. It's already good. It's already good. Because we already walk with Jesus, and Jesus already knows what's coming. And it is a very new aging metaphysical philosophy that says, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And that's exactly what we're saying. If you count it all joy when you fall into tri trials, because if you stick it out, you're going to be a better person. See, we've reduced the powerful statement of one of the first brothers in Christ to a feel-good slogan that you'd find in a self-help book, as opposed to what he was saying was, find your joy in the midst of all trials. Because your joy is Jesus crucified. Now I keep saying that because let's just we want Jesus at his worst. <laughs> we want Jesus on the cross. We want because Jesus at his worst, ironically, is Jesus at his most powerful. Jesus on the cross was when he beat everything that was up against us for all time. It was Jesus crucified and Jesus resurrected that saved us not only from eternal damnation. But every single thing in this world, every single thing in this world that could, could get us. So, so, in the midst of whatever's happening, and I'd like to add, good or bad, not just when bad things happen. See, again, this whole, this whole mentality of, I find my religion when I have problems. Um, is, is very secular and very self-serving where if you just walk with Jesus, it's not hard to find him. It's easier just to go, did you see what just happened? Yeah, Paige, here's what we're going to do about it. As opposed to scrambling and going, oh my gosh, I haven't prayed for weeks. I haven't, I haven't thought about him in weeks. I haven't thought about scripture in weeks. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? That's a horrible place to be. But people who walk with Jesus 24-7 have a patience about them that when stuff happens, they're like, well, yeah, this is really bad, but I really am convinced that Jesus is right here because he was here right before I found out the bad news, whatever it is. He was right here. And I, I, I'm pretty convinced he knew it was coming. I don't think he's surprised. Therefore, patience. And you'll be perfect and complete and lacking in nothing. 
perfect and complete. I, that's interesting because biblically speaking, perfect and complete mean the same thing. Mean the same thing. That's what's so interesting about the translation of Scripture is that when Jesus says, um, be perfect as I am perfect, he's saying be complete as I am complete because we are, it's impossible for us to be perfect. But we could be complete. We could be complete as in completed by being one with, with him. And so perfect and complete and now holy on top of it all pretty much mean the same thing because holy means set aside. Holy means set aside and separated from the masses. Because being perfect and complete makes us different than everyone else because everyone else doesn't have the resource that we have in Christ. But we are perfect and complete in the time of trial and we're patient and lacking in nothing because we're already connected with Jesus from our life. We're already connected with Jesus from our life. Now, I'm on this side of what I'm saying, and I know this is a, a lot. <laughs> this is a lot, and it's all over the place. But, but I'm really trusting, I'm really trusting that if anyone who's here tonight or sees this it leaves or finishes with any sense of, of what, <laughs> they'll go back and they'll read the first chapter of James and see that James was talking to a group of people saying, um, there's going to be a lot of ups and downs in, in your Christian walk. Just going to see, see, we apply scripture to our lives, and our, our lives are so self-serving in nature. I've talked about this before. When did the church start getting jobs, and when did the church start having careers? When back in these days, the church all lived together and prayed together and never stopped seeking the things of the Lord. And, and, and so we apply this to things don't go the way I want them. <laughs> That's what a trial is. Things don't go the way I want them to go. A trial for them is uh, you're being dragged off and imprisoned and beaten and put to death. Really big difference. Yet, they thought of it as an honor to die for Jesus. So a trial meant something completely, completely different. It meant something great that wasn't easy or pleasant to endure, as opposed to something horrible when things don't go the way we want, and something great when things go the way we do want. Spend 30 years serving the Lord, and you will find out that great and awful are not very different. That that the minute something good happens, something bad is right around the corner, and the minute something bad happens, something good is right around the corner. That's just the way it is. And that sounds like life. And and we're so we're so Americanized and we're so self-serving and we're so let's make ourselves feel good. We're so fast food that that we separate life into good and bad all the time. Good and bad, good and bad. And if we're walking with the Lord, literally, not imaginatively, isn't that good? So if we do that all the time, isn't it good all the time? And when bad things happen, well, it's not as pleasant to endure, is it? Sometimes it's unbearable, and I'm not anyway. I'm certainly not making light of anyone's problems. I'm certainly not making light of anyone having problem with the work environment or at home, because you know anyone who's lived that knows that that's pure hell. But, but, aren't our greatest testimonies about what God did in our trials? What God did in our trials. It's like uh, I was watching a movie last night that had a huge wedding. And I sat there and I go, well, no one ever testifies about what God did at their wedding. Unless something bad happens. Unless the, the uh, best man loses a ring. And everybody prayed and then it magically appears somewhere in the sand or something. Then, oh my gosh, God came through at our wedding. But if everything goes perfect at the wedding, who praises God for that? Who, 
where's the testimony? The most people are going to say is, it was a beautiful wedding and oh, we felt the presence of the Lord. But there's no, there's no testimony. The testimony is what transpires in people's lives that the normal human can't fix on their own and can't save on their own and can't transform on their own that somehow, some way, God worked through that horrible situation and made something wonderful and amazing come of it, usually leading people to Him or reviving people already in Him. I don't know. I'm having a trial with my dog tonight. My dog wants to come to church. If it happens, can we just, will you walk in and just wave the thing? Wave the sign, Colorado or bust. All right. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to call it the Colorado bottle. That's funny. Colorado is like what, one of the most beautiful places in the United States. I always say, guy, maybe one day I'll live in Colorado. I, I, not ever. I'm so angry about that. Never heard of such a thing. Have you guys seen that show, um, Pit Boss? It's about a guy who uh, rescues dogs from Colorado. I, I, I couldn't watch more than five minutes of it. I was so upset. So I watched six. <laughs> I didn't make it through a whole episode, that's for sure. I was like, I thought that would be a show I'd be really into. It's like, oh, that's why there's a new dog show tonight I'm not going to watch. Something bad happens to someone's dog. I can't handle it. I can't handle it. Unless it's my dog barking when I'm preaching. Wow, that, that's going to that's gonna look really low budget on YouTube. She's filming this right now, you know. He didn't last very long either, that dog. He usually makes it to at least 8.30 before we hear from him. Oh well. It's that kind of day. I probably didn't get the cat out of there. The cat's probably hiding in a corner teasing him. If we walk with the Lord, we will be perfect and complete and lacking in nothing, regardless of what good or what bad is happening. And again, I, this trial thing really gets on, under my skin because trials gets like a capital T. It's all in capital letters in our minds, actually. Trials are huge. Trials are something Christians love to talk about and preach about. And, and the thing I know is... When something really great happens in your life that you've really wanted, like you, I, I, let's just say win the lottery. That's a lot of stress. That goodness brings stress the same way trials bring stress. In fact, the lottery is a great example because if you're totally broke and you're losing your home and, 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 you're, and you're fighting you know, with government services to get the things you need, you have a lot of problems, but if you win the lottery, and I, God bless you if you do come to my church and tithe, please, um, you still have stress. It's just the, the other side of it. You have a whole new set of problems. When don't you have trials? My gosh, uh, get a new dog. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, I mean, he's the greatest joy in my life. He's perfect and amazing, and tonight he's being a pain in my ass. I mean, that's what that's what that's what it's all about. And by the way, Jesus is really great, but as you know, every once in a while, um, it's hard to be a Christian. I was gonna say it sucks to be a Christian, but I don't want to say it sucks to know Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Because it really doesn't. But it is a stress. I don't know about you, but every once in a while, I wake up and go, "It'd be really good to." Today, it'd be great just for one day to not have any spiritual responsibility, to have no spiritual conscience. Just to be like the people who, the atheists. I'd love to be an atheist for a day, you know, just to do whatever I feel like doing without second guessing my actions and going, what if I displease the Lord and and I'm going to do it anyway. So what's going to happen to me when I do that? You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know anything that's not without that. It's like, you know, it's great to have a baby, but <laughs> Talk about trials from the minute it starts. What doesn't come with trials? So how do trials become the big thing, the big separator? 
Good day or bad day, trial or no trial. I don't know, on the best day of my life, I have a trial going on somewhere. You know, no matter how good things get, there's something that I wish were different. And I can't, I can't be different than people in that. It's not about the trials doing anything. It, it's about recognizing that you're going to be surrounded by challenges and problems and concerns on at various levels. And I know illness and death are completely different than getting to, into a fight with your husband or a co-worker. I get that. And, and I'm not, obviously, I'm not negating that. You know, I'm the one who canceled a performance because I knew my dog was going to die and I left a performance to go put my dog down and didn't even blink about it. I'm the one who left, you know, before a performance because my dumb pit bull got out. You know, so I know, I, I know how important the little things are to us and how important each matter is to us. But we need to walk through these things with an understanding of it's really cool that I have such a rambunctious dog. As much as it is, it really sucks that I have such a rambunctious dog. You know, that it's, it, they're all part of the same thing. It's really painful that I'm losing this person. But praise God, I knew them. It's really, really, it really sucks to be getting old. <laughs> you know, it really sucks to be aging. But thank God I have a life and what I had in it that somewhere in there to never separate from the Lord, which means we are constantly in a state of gratitude because when you walk with the Lord, there's a, a, it's impossible not to be grateful for something because he, the Holy Spirit reminds you of God's goodness to you your whole life. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. My gosh, everybody's heard that one before. I see it tattooed on thugs all the time. I see like, like gangbangers, you know, that, and and they have, and they have, they always have Psalm 23 on them, you know. I'm like, wow, I'm surrounded by Christian bikers, Christian gang gang members, you know, Christian thugs. That makes me feel safe. But you know what? I'm sad that that scripture is used at funerals. I'm sad. I'm sad that that's like the death psalm because, my gosh, there's a little bit more to Psalm 23 than the one line. But, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the shadow of death, literally, just by reading it, this is some really clever knowledge of Greek and Hebrew and mumbo jumbo throw in. It's the possibility is that it's always looming. There's all, it's always looming that something's going to die or could die. Every single thing in your life has a beginning and a middle and an end. So eventually something's not going to stay the way you want it to. But yea, that when I walk through the valley, meaning this life, where I have this hovering sense that, that things don't last, I will fear no evil. And again, what scares you more? The appearance of Satan in your life or the death of a loved one? <laughs> you know, seriously, what scares me more is the death of a loved one. I'm, I'm more scared of the fact that I, I have an old dog and I have an old cat that one day, you know, they're going to pass away. That bothers me a lot more than the existence of Lucifer. You know what I'm saying? That the effect of sin on all creatures, great and small, is far more devastating to me than the pesky little red guy. So when the psalmist says, yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, he's not saying Beelzebub. He's saying the evil that men do, the evil that I do, the evil that is the result of sin and death. That I, yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I'm not going to be afraid of who's out to get me. I'm not certainly not going to be afraid of the devil because I walk with, walk with the Lord. But I'm not going to be afraid of what I could lose because you're with me. Because your, your rod and your staff comfort me. I mean, he's saying that I am 
forced to walk through the valley of the trial. I'm forced to. But the trials are irrelevant. It's who it's irrelevant. Who it's who's did I say irrelevant? I've said that so many times as a joke that I actually said it's right. I thought I could get by, but I meant to say, and I quote, <laughs> the the trials are irrelevant. It's who's walking with us that's relevant, that matters. That's what matters. It's who's with me through these experiences. Because these experiences are not, are not special to me. I'm not a victim of evil any more than anyone else. I'm not the victim of death any more than else. I'm not the victim of loss and sickness and, you know, bad marriages and bad work environments. The patience comes from walking with the Lord and being comforted, and therefore it's easy to have patience. It's not something to muster up like some weird concept of faith, but it's from experience of knowing Him that whatever good comes my way, I walk, I walk through it with Him. Whatever bad comes my way, I walk through with Him. I am always with Him, and I am always comforted, and therefore I am made perfect and I am complete, and I lack in nothing. Therefore, it is logical to count it all joy. Amen? And now